Hello people, in this video let us look at some case studies of pathology, okay. Here uh, you have a 20 year old male, he has uh, presented with history of fever, altered sensorium and neck rigidity, okay. Hold on. So he has presented with this neck rigidity. Lumbar puncture was done. So they have collected his CSF, correct? Now the CSF analysis shows the following features. The appearance is turbid, so definitely there is some meningitis, you can see, or some infection, right? Then um, the proteins are uh, <coughs> 200 mg per deciliter, glucose is 10 mg per deciliter, chloride is this much, cell count is this much, neutrophils are there. What is your diagnosis? Two points in favor, common causative microorganisms for this condition. Absolute contraindications for CFSF aspirations. These are the three questions they've asked. First of all, what do you think it is? It seems to be meningitis because you saw that there is neck rigidity. There is turbid uh, CSF. What about these values? What do you think about these values? So if you remember from our uh, meningitis video, we have seen that whenever there is um, turbidity, obviously you will say there is some kind of a problem. Correct? If there is turbidity, some problem is there. Now, what about proteins? Proteins normally should be 15 to 45. And here in this case, it is increased. Correct? So, it is increased somewhere 200, they are saying. Okay, it's increased. Then, what about glucose? Glucose should be reduced. Let's see what has happened here actually. Go back here and show us that. Proteins increased. Glucose has reduced. Cell count, usually neutrophils. Cell counts are neutrophils guys so if it is neutrophil mostly neutrophils are in bacterial kind of infection so it can be acute pyogenic meningitis right so let's go with this it is acute pyogenic meningitis because here you can see it is mostly neutrophils is there only in this uh, pyogenic meningitis what and all can cause pyogenic meningitis neisseria meningitis hemophilus influenza Influenza, okay. So basically, proteins will always increase, glucose will decrease. Proteins will always increase. If there's infection in the CSF, proteins will always increase, glucose will decrease if there is uh, bacterial infection, neutrophils will be there if it's bacterial infection. Only neutrophils indicates acute pyogenic meningitis. If it is tuberculous, remember it is showing lymphocytes also. Okay. So here, what are the causative organisms? Causative organisms are mentioned here. Causative organisms will be Neisseria meningitis and Haemophilus influenzae. Okay. So, let's go back here. We got the answer to this uh, <coughs> question. So, we are going to write the answer here. As protein has increased, glucose has decreased and neutrophils are more and it is turbid. Definitely, it is meningitis considering there is neck rigidity and fever and uh, altered sensorium. So basically, it looks like an acute pyogenic meningitis. This is the diagnosis. Two points in favor of your diagnosis. Two points which are in favor of my diagnosis are these. That proteins have increased, neutrophils are more, glucose is less, etc. And it's turbid. What is the common causative microorganisms? You can say Neisseria meningitis, Haemophilus influenzae. Absolute contraindications for CSF aspiration. What are the contraindications for CSF aspiration? These are the contraindications to CSF aspiration, guys. Uh, raised intracranial pressure, like due to a space occupying lesion, like brain abscess or a posterior fossa, uh, tumor, spinal hemat, subdural hematoma, epidural abscess. These patients have headache, altered pupillar response, absent dolls, eye reflex, abnormal respiratory pattern, papal edema bradycardia, hypertension, all these things will be there. So, in these people, if you do a lumbar puncture, you know what will happen? This can lead to herniation of brain. If mass lesion is clinically suspected, cranial computerized tomography, CT or magnetic resonance imaging should be done first. First, you should do a CT or MRI. Okay, then you should confirm and then basically where and all will intracranial pressure be more if there is space occupying lesion, then hematoma, subdural, 
सब ड्यूरल हेमाटोमा देन एपिड्यूरल एब्सिस सम ब्रेन एब्सिस एक्सेट्रा ओके यू शुड डू ए सी टी स्कैन और एम आर आई फर्स्ट सो हाउ विल यू नो दीज पीपल हैव दिस द क्लिनिकल फीचर्स विल बी लाइक हेड एक ऑल्टर्ड सेंस ऑल्टर्ड सेंसोरियम और ऑल्टर्ड प्यूपिलरी रिस्पॉन्स विल बी एबसेंट डॉल साइड रिफ्लेक्स विल बी एबसेंट अबनॉर्मल रेस्पिरेटरी पैटर्न ब्रेडिकार्डिया पैपिलेडिमा हाइपर टेंशन डी सेरिब्रेट और डी कॉर्टिकेट पॉस्चरिंग okay so if there are any symptoms like this you should not do lumbar puncture then cardio respiratory compromise if it is there a cardio respiratory compromise bleeding diathesis that has not been corrected okay and in there in the in the site of lumbar puncture if there's local infection then don't do uh, lumbar puncture okay bleeding diathesis actually means slow clotting slow clotting because of uh, hypercoag due to what is what am i saying slow clotting hypocoagulability okay got it right so all these are the contraindications for csf puncture did you get answer to all your questions here so what is your diagnosis meningitis what is your uh, let us write the answers here insert text box meningitis it is acute pyogenic meningitis why why are you saying that because neutrophils are more right basically here the appearance is turbid so you can say it is some kind of meningitis some csf issue right then neck rigidity will point to meningitis neck rigidity rigidity okay then neutrophils are more this is on all you have to write as answers two points you have mentioned okay what are the common causative organisms neisseria meningitis then haemophilus influenzae remember you can write others also staph aureus and all that also you can write lot of things cause meningitis then what are the contraindications that we have written here so these are the answers to this question uh, this uh, case study Hope you enjoyed this video. Come back for the next case study. Bye bye.